We just finished season five, episode six called Tribes. And it's another slower episode, sort of like last week. Although this one's a lot of like character intentions. I still thought it was great because I think there's a lot of moments in this episode that were so like firsts for the season. The Rosinante finally takes off. I was getting like little chills seeing it take off Um, because it's been such a core of the show since the beginning to see it kind of forced to the ground, you know, for the entire first, you know, five episodes. Um, This was, yeah, this is, this is big. Bobby in armor. And we haven't seen that, you know, for for quite a while either. Those moments alone. And the other one I thought of that, you know, uh, was coming out of last week was we've been clearly hinting that that, you know, Clarissa, that Peaches is going to, you know, eventually be able to use her mods again. And she does. It was very limited because, you know, she's still really weak, but we get this really intense moment. Of- uh, spoiler alert for yeah. for this video and continuing on. But no, these awesome moments that have been like we've basically been teasing since the beginning of the season. And we've got this really cool payoff on this otherwise very slow character driven episode before we get going please like subscribe leave your comments down below uh you can come join us on twitch where we do this uh live all the time and we will also be streaming squadrons if you can't get your space kicks and i will be yelling and raging at the screen because people keep killing me because i'm probably (laughs) not very good because i just got it so um, you you are you are no Alex Kamal pilot. Is that what is that not, where we're going? No. Right? Yeah, no. I thought it was actually a really good episode. Uh, they do, of course. Again, the show does a great job of pacing the slow, character-driven stuff with the fun action stuff. Seeing how uh, Bobby and Alex get out of their uh, yeah. predicament. I mean, uh, when Alex is floating through space and there's just nothing but darkness. Nothing. The suspense was, yeah. it was like, oh, is this how they get rid of him? So that's actually kind of another thing. It's like, yeah. we know he's going off the show. So I was like, oh, God, is this, is this the is moment? This the moment that it happens? And yeah, um, yeah uh, that, and then, of course, my doomsday popper uh, guy at the end there. He, uh, w- you know, great little action, exciting scene, yeah. but that is leveled out with a lot of great uh, character scenes and politics. Arjun. Madam Vesarella, please forgive the intrusion. I'm just going to kind of start at the beginning. We catch up with Christian again, and we haven't seen her, you know, last episode. We kind of skipped her her side of things. And it's so rare for us to see her be really overwhelmed emotionally. She's usually so in control of her emotions and so in control of the situation. She's like the political strategist, but she doesn't know if her husband's alive. And you can see that that is just absolutely breaking her apart. Um, Another one that I appreciate, and I'm not trying to get political here, but it was fascinating to see a a leader of a a planet in this situation say, you know what, exactly fully qualified for this position. Would (laughs) you mind stepping in and backing me up here because uh, I could really use your help? I'm like, oh, how refreshing. You brought it up last week that uh, we hadn't seen Ava Sarala and, uh, you know, they started us right off this week with her scene and, you know, uh, I had made a comment of we didn't know what happened to uh, Gao. And somebody was like, no idiot, it's like a metric ton of blah 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 and hit me with the science and called me dumb and, uh, you know, unfortunately they were right in this case because we got confirmation she's dead. Look, I, I know they're a hard sci-fi show but it's still a TV show. No one One's dead until they're dead. We really don't know until they show you a body. Come on, people. Have you not watched enough movies and TV shows to know, like, I need to see a body. Otherwise, I am going to assume they're trying to pull one over on me. I like that scene with Avasarala because it really lets us know that there is a very brand new government, uh, an yeah. unqualified government, just people who had low-level kind of positions who have yeah. now been elevated to much higher rank. Minister of the Interior? Transportation, actually. I'm the new acting secretary general. Earth is struggling right now. But for me, I think the most interesting part of the episode was the belters. Leading up to this episode, I have felt that while Marco Anaros has always been uh, very well calculated and Mm -hmm. ambitious with his plans, I felt that 
it's maybe not so well thought out and a little bit emotional, right? And that's that's kind of my For feeling. Sure. And now we kind of see the genius of his plan where even though belters don't want anything to do with him, they're now they have to get together. Yep. They're they're stuck. Yep. Earth is coming for any belter. It doesn't matter if you say you're not with uh, Marco. Yeah. You, you're stuck, and that's kind of the genius of his whole little plan playing out. And it kind of hit me hard when you're seeing people who are so vehemently anti Marco and what yeah. he's done, but they're like, yeah, we're gonna join him though. And there's also this level of like, I don't think people, even belters, understood how prepared he was to kind of flip this switch that like. Like, he's got these Martian gunships. Like, they couldn't even stand against him because, you know, he's just so much more unified than any other Belter faction at this point. So it's like, he's the only game in town. And no, you're absolutely right. You expect a drummer to go in, you know, guns blazing, and and that's not an option. You know, we talked about that last week. There's like, we were waiting, like, oh, maybe drummer will, you know, be able to stand up. I'm like, nope, she can't. I don't think she's given up. And in fact, like, she now seems to know that uh, that Naomi is on his ship. You know, yes. that Philip kind of accidentally let that slip. But at the same time, Carol, and I don't know if that's pronouncing right, it's K-A-R-A-L, um, has been put on uh, on drummership by uh, by Marco. And Carol, like, is the one during this episode who's saying, oh, hey, actually, if you need somebody spaced, uh, I'll totally do it without a second of hes- hesitation. Whereas, you know, Sin and Philip are, are like, wait a second, space Naomi, no, you psycho, like, do it yourself. There was this intense moment between between Sin and Marco, and for a second, I thought that Marco was going to order Philip to throw Sin out the, the, the airlock, or just something was going to go down. It actually did make Marco look a little bit weak, and, and I don't think he did have a plan there. I think he's just like, go kill your mom. I think he just wanted to get a rise out of people. No, I agree with he, you. you know, it, it, but that's what I mean, like where I feel like he does things a little emotionally, right? And that telling your son, your, your yeah, the mom's best friend to space her right. is like, what did you think was going to happen, man? Like it, it was a yeah. miscalculation. He was, he's a little too drunk on his own power. Uh, that that's kind of what's going on right now and you could tell he was feeling himself i like the way that they yeah. shot the interaction between drummer and him uh the camera angle yeah. up and the camera angle down yep. looking up and looking down yep. and the power dynamic there and and how she still feels so strong and defiant in uh yeah. as the camera yeah. looks <laughs> straight right. down at her right. kind of you kind of got a feel for the belters and we've talked about that but specifically we have you know i think it's oksana is um drummer's second in command and you know she's kind of whispering to her dude like uh you know maybe we've got to make sure that she doesn't go cray on uh, you know when when things get face to face and you know up until that point i think we assume that everybody's on board drummers their captain but clearly i think it just speaks to there's so much discord in the belter community at this point mm-hmm. and i mean obviously the the title of the episode is is tribes and you know amos gives a whole speech on what that means to him but i think it's just as much really about the kind of tribalism inside the belters yeah. it shows what kind of leader she is uh when they can actually have a disagreement and still come to an agreement at the end even right. though they don't all agree yeah we got a, a shout out to uh to anderson dawes and that makes me a monster the OPA sort of underground leader. And I don't think we've seen Anderson Dawes since season two, but I am 99% sure Anderson Dawes is still alive in the world of the expanse at this point. So clearly like still commanding respect enough for people to say like, Oh, even Anderson Dawes couldn't raise, you know, get the belt collectively united in the same way that Marco could. And I'm like, I wonder, I don't know if we're going to get, you know, some kind of cameo. I think it's Jared Harris, fantastic actor was, was playing Anderson Dawes. Um, but it's interesting we haven't seen him since the show got taken over by um, by Amazon. So uh, maybe maybe cameo in the future. But he does keep getting he keeps getting little little name checks, which is which is kind of cool to the history. Gets of the show. your your Spidey sense going that might be exactly. having a little like, cameo wait. coming up. Maybe a little call Anderson back. Dawes. Ooh, really? Jared Harris cameo? Yes, oh, please. Yeah, yes, the... please. So where should I stow this? Oh, uh, no. Way. Always happy to see Monica sneaking yeah. her way uh, back I, into the storyline. So uh, she's great. Well, she's great. She's a tough girl. I, lo- I love that it's like Monica's such a, you know, it, what is she going to do? I don't know. She's going to kind of document things, but also she's like, a, you know, she's got her little tough act. She's like, hey, 
I was there when we yeah. flew through the ring gates. So come at me, bro. You know, it's very <laughs> like, yeah, what are you going to do? Yeah. She's um, just, she's just so pretty and spunky and tough. And I, and, and she's constantly in over her head and she likes to rise to the occasion. <laughs> and I just like that right, about right. her. It's, it's kind of like, she's yeah. like that intrepid reporter who's just like, right, right, Oh right. my God. Like what? <laughs> and she like, tries, has to get her way out of it or, you know, have some friends who get her out of it usually. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I wasn't thinking about the consequences when I got them. Just revenge. It's been sort of a, a hint to that thing that eventually we're gonna, you know, see Clarissa, uh, you know, go roid rage again. Um, and it, it's, you know, she's such an interesting character that you know she was. She was. A, I'm gonna just say that she was sort of a, a complicated bad guy, you know, in season three. Um, for the for the majority of it, I mean, she's she's not a good person. She did some terrible things, killed some people. Um, but I do like that this show is expanded enough, expands, um, that we can see this sort of, you know, redemption for her that she doesn't think of herself as a killer because she sort of lives in fear because she, you know, I mean, she wanted revenge, but she still is so afraid of, uh, you know, of bad things happening to her, bad things happening to people in her life. And um, it was good to get, you know, just more insights into who she is. And I think she's such a great character to get insights into Amos. And and we all, I think, love as much Amos as we can get. But sometimes Amos is a tough nut to crack. And clearly Peaches is very, very good at cracking the Amos nut. Yeah, uh, to that, that point, the, I was actually a little surprised when he was like, when she had asked him, uh, if the guy was nice, would this have turned out yeah. any different? And he was kind of like, eh. And you're like, no. really, really? You would, uh, I, you know, I, I don't know. I kind of expected a, a little bit more better from him, but I think it's the point that he's starting to revert maybe to his survivalist instincts I, and, exactly. and, and her little thing about, I can't be a monster cause I'm so afraid. It shows like, I'm afraid of what I did. I, you know, I'm afraid of uh, all this stuff that that's a great little, um, the show, great writing, right? That little monster yeah, talk yeah. with Peaches uh, really sums up her experience, just like the tribes thing, where, you know, it's The Walking Dead. We've seen this a bunch of times, but it's just a very right. concise and clear cut way of showing where these characters at are, are at. With right. Him. And and what's great is, you know, I mean, it's it's I think all the actions and all the responses were so very true to Amos and so very true to what we know of Clarissa. And at the same time. Amos also, I mean, I love that they end kind of on this idea that like he sees that he's going down his old dark path and he, the difference at the point of his life that we knew him for the previous four seasons was he had Naomi, he had Holden, he had these people around him. You know, I, I don't think Amos would ever describe himself as a good person, but he was around good people. Mm -hmm. And so he made better choices, yes. you know. Um, when, when he was making, you know, when he was choosing to kill people, it was for a better good with those people. And now it's probably going to be very questionable. Some of the choices he's going to make, because I think that's exactly the point was that he, he would have killed whoever was there because they needed that stuff. The show gave the fans, uh, everything they always wanted, which is Amos yep. half naked and splattered in blood. Oh, right. <laughs> like, oh baby. <laughs> oh man. Join us. Uh, next, week next week and the week after. And again, we'll be on Twitch. We, uh, we look forward to hearing you guys over the course of the week, and we'll see you, uh, see you next Wednesday morning.